Hi guys, hope you're well. Today um, I've decided I'm doing a video that's pretty much long overdue. Um, I, it's coming up a year now since I went to Disneyland California for my first ever time. And since then I've done two Disneyland Paris trips as you know about. And I thought that maybe I should do a video that talks about the comparisons between Disneyland Resort California and Disneyland Paris. So let's get cracking. First up, hotels. Disneyland Paris has seven hotels that are all on site and they're all within walking distance of the park. I think the Davy Crockett Ranch, which is self catering, you have to drive to. Uh, to and from the parks but with like the Cheyenne and the Santa Fe it's maybe a 15 to 20 minute walk Newport Bay and Sequo uh, I would say it's maybe a 10 15 minute walk Sequoia Lodge is a 10 minute walk easy New York is a 10 minute walk and of course then the Disneyland Hotel which is known as the Big Pink Castle in Paris that's literally like there guess who stay there even have their own special lift to get into the parks basically they still have to go through the same entrance as everybody else but uh, yeah they're um they they're special in disneyland california there's only three hotels that are disney and um, there is the disneyland hotel which is the most expensive and it's right at the bottom of like downtown disney area and then the next is the grand californian and that's entrance that's got an entrance right into the parks and then the next hotel which is further around is Paradise Pier um, Paradise Pier and the Grand California Hotel both I think have entrances that lead into the California Adventure Park and I've never stayed there because when I went last year it was just way too pricey but they look really awesome uh, the Grand California Lodge has a wilderness theme about it whereas Paradise Pier is more beachy and it fits in with Paradise Pier area of California Adventure um, and yeah they but they all three of them look really cool I meant to have a look around when I was there last year but ran out of time just completely forgot but I would love to have a wander around and explore like the little shops and the little areas of those hotels so, uh, in Paris the hotels all have different themes as well you've got the Cheyenne which has got a western theme David Crockett is kind of like country camping style Santa Fe is cars themed now I think that used to be wild western as well Sequoia Lodge is pretty much like Grand California it's got a wilderness woods feel Newport Bay is like the yacht resort in Walt Disney World I think and the New York is quite classy and quite city-ish and the Disneyland Castle is just white and grand and very very posh indeed so they cater for pretty much every kind of feel if you're going for like a western theme yeah so that's the hotels when you stay in a Disneyland Paris hotel you get it with um, with your stay. You get your park tickets, and those park tickets entitle you to two hours every morning of like extra magic hours. So we've talked about the hotels in the Disneyland parks, both in California and Paris. Now I'm going to tell you about the extra magic hours. In California, they have um, extra morning hours which can only be taken on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays as it was last year when I went and you only get one extra hour in the parks um, and it can either be the Disneyland Park or it can be California Adventure Park depending on how the system's running there in Paris you get two extra hours and these run from like 8 till 10 and then the park will open to regular guests at 10 o'clock I found that I was in I did use my magic morning in California I remember getting up very early in the morning and getting to the park for 7 a.m. so I could be let in and I used that extra hour to queue 15 minutes for Anna and Elsa and then I did a couple of other things uh, I think all in all though I think the extra hours in 
Paris are probably better because you get two and you can get a few more extra things done I think or you can do certain rides and attractions again and again uh, one hour isn't really very much but it's still something like I remember being grateful that I only waited 15 minutes for Anna and Elsa whereas um, I've seen in various other videos that some people were waiting up to five or six hours after the park had opened to the, everyone else so quite grateful for that in a way but it just sucked that it was only one morning. I think if it had been every morning, then I could have utilised my time a lot better in California. So that's the extra magic hours. Uh, one thing I will say, though, is I've only been to Disneyland Paris in the winter, and the opening times in the winter are quite short. I'm not sure what they're like in California in their winter time, uh, but... But generally the park tend to close at 7 or 9 o'clock in the evening. So even though they've got extra magic hours in the morning, they close on a night earlier. Whereas in California, I was there from like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning and I was there until midnight and like after midnight, which was crazy. Uh, California Adventure Park would be open until 10 and then I think the week I went it was like grad night. So they were close at 10 to the general public and then it was only for grad students only, which was fine because then I was able to park hop across to Disneyland and have an extra two hours in Disneyland and riding Indiana Jones is like so surreal at like 10 to 11 and Pirates of the Caribbean was a walk on, it was amazing. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the park does open a little bit longer in Paris but not till midnight I think it's like 11 o'clock or something so there's like pros and cons yes California ha doesn't have as long magic hour ex for like hotel and guests and whatnot but they have got longer opening time in the evening compared to Paris next I'm going to talk about lands in the Disneyland park uh, in Paris you have the, the same, pretty much the same lands as in California. In Paris, you've got Main Street, you've got Fantasyland, Adventureland, uh, Frontierland, and you've got t Discoveryland, which is what they call it in Paris. In California, though, there's a couple more lands. Like in California, you've got Main Street. You've got Tomorrowland, which is the, which is Paris's Discoveryland. You've got Fantasyland, you've got Adventureland, you've got Frontierland. But then you've also got New Orleans Square and you've also got Critter Country, which are really cool. In Main Street in Paris, uh, all the shops are pretty much like linked together. You can just walk straight through all the shops. And they also have two arcades at the side, so that's really handy when it's really busy, like after Dreams or something, and you want to get away quick, because most people just go straight down Main Street. You can go down the arcades and like escape, and it's a little bit quieter. Uh, and I think in California, the shops are a bit more individual. You have to literally come and go in and out. And I think there's more variety on California's Main Street with like the merchandise they sell. A lot of the stuff in Paris tends to be fairly similar and the same as you're going through. In And then as you're walking down Main Street, of course, you come to the castles. And the castles are obviously very different. California's castle is very, very small. Uh, and it looks big from like the top of Main Street. But as you're walking down, they have a special effect where the buildings and the castle look a bit bigger. But as you get nearer, it is small. Uh, Paris's castle is very, very grand. Uh, sometimes it can look a little bit shabby. Like the upkeep of the castle, I don't think, is as good. And, you know, Disneyland California, they've just had their 60th anniversary celebration start and their castle's like decked out in diamonds and looks amazing. But the, like the differences between the castles inside are like really cool as well. In California, the castle is pretty much a walk through. And then at the sides, they've got a, the, an area where you walk through and you start at the beginning of the Sleeping Beauty story and uh, you go through the castle and come out the other side and it tells you the story of Sleeping Beauty. 
whereas in Paris the castle you walk through it and there's like a Christmas shop and there's another shop selling I think there's like glassware and then there's like the dolls and the dresses and stuff and then there's steps going down to a dragon in Paris which is really cool also in Disneyland Paris Castle there are stairs that you can go up but they're more central whereas in California they're at the sides and again it tells the story of Sleeping Beauty but you can also go outside onto the turrets and look over all of Fantasyland which is really cool Ooh, also wanted to say about Main Street as well, obviously California is the original Disneyland so there's a lot more, it's a lot, sticks a lot closer to Walt's idea of the park and one thing I really like is that the fire station has uh, a can, ha, is where Walt used to live in a flat and in the window of the fire station in where Walt lived um, there's a candle in the window and it stays lit like all the time I think it's like a battery or electric power now, but it's like on all the time to represent Walt's spirit in the park, which is really, really cool. So that's the castles and their differences. Now for Fantasyland. Fantasyland in both parks is pretty much exactly the same. Few of the rides, most of the rides are the same, but they're just placed differently around the parks. And like the restaurants, some are similar, some are different. In Paris, there's Au Chalet de la Marionette which is Bavarian slash Pinocchio themed in California it's called Village House and there's a few rides which California has that Paris doesn't um, Par California has got Mr. Toad's Wild Ride got the Matterhorn it's got Alice in Wonderland's Wild Adventure Ride which is completely like different from anything we have in Paris Paris has a maze for Alice the teacups as well, like they're different because the I think they're more centrally placed in Fantasyland in Paris, whereas in California they're kind of hidden off and it's a bit smaller into the side. Um, differences as well between some of the rides that are similar, bit, that are the same in Paris and California, is it's a small world is brighter and the characters, uh, the film characters involved in It's a Small World in California, like Lilo and Stitch in, Hawa in Hawaii, Cinderella in France, um, Alice and the White Rabbit and the Queen of Hearts are in the English part of It's a Small World, which is like brilliant to see, and like the colour scheme and everything. The dark rides aren't so dark in California, I think they're a bit brighter, and Paris it can be a bit gloomy and a bit difficult to see anything in the dark rides, but in California the lighting's a bit better I think, which is awesome. Also Fantasyland has the added bonus in California of having Pixie Hollow where you can meet Tinkerbell and her fairy friends. The Princess Pavilion in Paris is also very different to Fantasy Fair in California in that uh, you don't know who you're getting at all in Paris, in California. Sometimes it might let you want know one or all of the princesses, or maybe not at all, and it's a big surprise like Paris, but most of the time they let you know at least one. Also, Fantasyland in California has the Fantasy Fair Theatre, where you can watch a show, either it's Frozen, or it's Tangled, or it's Beauty and the Beast, and it's told by two storytellers and a princess, or queen, or some one of the characters from the story which is interesting now one land that uh, California has that Paris does is Toontown Toontown is really fun it's aimed more at the 10 age 10 and unders I feel but it's really cool you've got Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin which is really fun you get in the yellow taxi and you spin round and you follow the story it's also got Mickey and Minnie's house where you can go and meet them there's Chip and Dale's tree house, Donald Duck's boat, Goofy's house and Pluto and Goofy and Pluto and Donald and sometimes Daisy all come out and do meet and greets around there as well it's also got the fastest and quickest roller coaster to ever go on it's called Gadgets Go Coaster and I can guarantee that from get starting the queue getting joining the queue to riding the ride it takes like a minute or less so that's really fun to do not much else really I think goes on in Toontown it's just a lot of photo opportunities but it's something that Paris doesn't have and I think something that Paris could maybe consider I mean there's like different props and things in Toontown like weights and 
uh, you can go touch a library door and it'll electrocute you on the doorknob so that's really fun and uh, yeah it's just really really fun in Toontown I quite enjoyed my time there Adventureland in Paris it, it's in a completely different location to California actually if you're coming up Main Street in Paris it generally goes Frontierland as the first land and then Adventureland whereas in California it's the other way around and you've got Adventureland and then Frontierland and Adventureland in Paris is quite small area I think it's got two major attractions I guess it's got Pirates of the Caribbean and then it's got the Indiana Jones roller coaster and that's pretty much it there is Skull Rock where you can go climbing the rocks and it's got the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse but there's really not a lot to Fantasyland and it borders because it is like mixed in with Frontierland sometimes it can get a bit confusing about where things are um, so California with their Adventureland you walk in and then you've got like the t Enchanted Tiki Room and you can buy door whips which are really nice and then you've got Indiana Jones you've got the tree house but it's been altered in California to Tarzan's tree house instead of the Swiss Family Robinson it's got an Indiana Jones ride but the Indiana Jones ride in California is really different to Paris it's not a roller coaster it's a car ride when you get in a jeep and you ride through the Indiana Jones movie and then it's got pirates but then I'm not sure if pirates is classed as Adventureland or it goes into another section New Orleans Square because they're kind of the same and as you walk through Adventureland you go into New Orleans Square and they've got like a restaurant and seating area you can buy a mint julep you can meet Tiana there which is really fun they have canoe boats that you get on and you paddle away with a guy cast member like telling you stroke I think and stuff which is really fun they do have uh, the river boat uh, Molly Brown and Mark Twain I think get alternated in California a lot it's, so that's the same as Paris one thing that California has is that Paris doesn't have in regards to like the lake and that there's an island called Tom Sawyer's Island in California that you can go across on a river on a raft boat and that's really interesting it's got caves to explore and whatnot and you can have a really good fun time over there from what I've seen again I didn't do that whereas in Paris you just take the river boat and it just goes around the lake basically Haunted Mansion is a big attraction in California that comes next as you're walking through New Orleans Square it doesn't do fast passes same as Phantom Manor the storyline is different but the ride is pretty much the same in theory it is kind of scary and California has just had the reintroduction of the Hatbox Ghost which is really fun and exciting a lot of fuss has been made recently over the Hatbox Ghost I wish I'd met him when I went on the Haunted Mansion and then as you're going through Adventureland and you're going through New Orleans Square, you come to Critter Country, which has a couple of restaurants, a shop. It's got Splash Mountain, which is awesome. It's got a Winnie the Pooh meet and greet. You can meet Winnie, Tigger and Piglet and Eeyore. So not, not Piglet, but Eeyore, I think. And it's got the Winnie the Pooh ride, which is super cute and super fun. That's, again, something that Paris doesn't have. And I just love the whole theming of all those areas. It did feel like, as you, even as you're walking along, that you're stepping into these other worlds. And suddenly it was different. Like suddenly you're in Adventureland and you could be a pirate or something. Then next you're in New Orleans Square and it's 1920s style. And there's Tiana over there making gumbo. Tomorrowland slash Discoveryland in Paris and California. Paris is having a major refurb at the minute. Space Mountain 2 is now shut and I think they've had the Videopolis area closed as well while well, they're turning into a Jedi training academy um, but yeah Tomorrowland, Discoveryland in Paris it's got Space Mountain 2, it's got Star Tours it had Captain EO but I think that's closed now as well it's got Autopia and it's got Buzz's Lightyear Blast and Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's pretty much it to it. In Tomorrowland, 
when I went they had Autopia, they had Star Tours, which I never did. I think they still have Captain EO there, I could be wrong. They do have their version of Space Mountain, it's the very first version, but I never got to ride it as it was closed when I was there, which I was really gutted about. It was one of the rides I really wanted to do and see the difference between it and Mission 2 in Paris. And they've got a Jedi Training Academy there already installed, which is really cool. And like all the little kids get to go up and fight Darth Vader and Darth Maul, which is super fun. Another thing which California Disneyland had in their Tomorrowland is Interventions, which is a great big building, which I believe now is shut. But when I went, you could do the Iron Man experience and you could be Iron Man and you could meet Thor and that was really cool going to Asgard traveling through time and space to meet Thor and you could meet Captain America and they had like a little Asimo robot show thing going on and Peter's story time but like I said that's all closed down now but back when I went that was super awesome I loved that and I'm not really one for like Tomorrowland and Discoveryland, I don't know, I'm not a very kind of space agey person. I don't really like Star Tours in Paris, which is why I never rode it in California, even though I hear that there's like different stories that you can ride. I'm not too sure. And Buzz Lightyear Blast, it's the same both in California and Paris. So again, I love that ride. I did find it nigh on impossible to find my picture though. Uh, in California you have to be super quick to run off the ride and then find your picture to email it to yourself um, whereas in Paris it's a bit more slower and you can get it put on the photo pass. Eating characters that's a big one really for the Disney Empire um, I found that meeting characters in California was a lot more enjoyable than meeting them in Paris and I just feel like the atmosphere in California was, is a lot more relaxed with characters and it's not all as scheduled like you can just be sat on a bench randomly and Peter Pan will come running out and he'll just like walk around the Matterhorn um, oh yeah that's something that Fantasyland has that uh, Paris doesn't that's another big one but yeah meeting characters totally different like Peter Pan will just come running out and he'll meet and greet with people and he'll play games with the kids and stuff and it's really fun like I just enjoyed myself a lot more I don't know whether climate has something to do with it as well but people are just a lot more relaxed in Paris I feel like every character meet and greet is not really random it's all planned people know when there's going to be certain characters out and about like if you want to meet Peter Pan or Hook or Smee or Wendy then you go to Adventureland from 10.30 onwards and they will be there and there's such a rush and a push and as soon as those characters appear everyone's like me, my photo, my turn and literally you feel like in Paris all you can do is get a photo and say hi and then that's it you know hi can I have a photo bye and then you're moved on to like the next person there's not a lot of interaction with the random character meet and greets whereas in California you know you could play games with Peter you could have cuddles with Duffy in Paradise Pier but I'm going to talk about the other parks in another vid I think now because this is getting on for 26 minutes um, but yeah, you could play games, you could drink tea with Hatter, Hatter and Alice just randomly walking around Fantasyland and around the teacups ride there and just, yeah, the randomness of characters being out was great, like Tiana just walking around New Orleans Square and in Discoveryland, you had, well, Tomorrowland, you might have Stitch popping out here and there, I think. In Paris with like random character meet and greets you have you actually have planned meet and greets in Main Street with like Mickey and Minnie by the boarding house Goofy and Pluto tag team together Chip and Dale will be by the Plaza restaurant uh, Plaza Gardens restaurant which is cool but yeah there's just not in the, and like in California 
the characters that come out randomly, like Peter and Alice and Hatter, they don't always have a cast member with them, which is really nice. Uh, whereas in Paris, they need like maybe one or even two cast members to control the masses. It's like mass hysteria when you're in Paris, which I wasn't too keen on. Whereas in California, I don't know, things are just a lot more relaxed and people are a lot more happy and there's none of the pushing and shoving and rudeness that goes on I think in Paris. <sighs> Restaurants, everyone's got to eat. When you want to book meals in Paris you have to be 60 days or less before you can ring up and book a meal and Although I've always been able to get the reservations and the times that I want for the restaurants I want to eat at, it's annoying being on the phone for an hour plus to Europe. It costs a fortune and you're on hold and although it's nice to listen to Magic on Parade, by the 30th time of hearing the same chorus, you kind of just want to get off the phone and stay to hell with it, but you can't do that. Uh, whereas. With the California booking, I liked that you could go online and reserve and make bookings online and have them confirmed to you by, via email. That was really handy, really efficient, although there was a cock up, I will admit, where I booked the wine country tutorial because I was just by myself. I obviously put in just one person on the booking and when I got there, the guy looked me up and down and he's like, will the rest of your party be joining you soon? And I was like rest of the party there's only me and he's like no we've got your reservation down here miss beckwith there's, there's 10 people and i'm like well there's certainly there going to be 10 of me having lunch here at the wine country tutorial so that was that <laughs> um it was obviously some sort of error mistake but yeah i like that you could book it online for free pretty much and it just seems so simple and it was easy to keep track. You could log on to the website and keep track of your reservations. You could change and alter them and like you were obviously being charged a fortune over the phone. Um, the selection of restaurants I think is bigger in California because obviously it's bigger parks. Like there is more choice and California does have more character meals than Paris does. Paris has three. You have Mickey's Cafe in uh, Disney Village. You have the Inventions restaurant in the Disneyland Hotel and you also have the Auberge de Sandrelon. Now Auberge de Sandrelon in Paris you meet three princesses and one prince and Susie and Perla are there in the Disneyland Hotel. It's usually I think the Fab Five but every Sunday they have a brunch from I think it's 11 till 3 and it, the brunch is always themed and you can meet various characters relating to that theme. Sometimes it's a princess theme, sometimes it's Russian New Year like I, what I went to, they have Bastille Day, um, so that's obviously characters in French costumes. And then in Mickey's Cafe, you generally tend to get Mickey or Minnie or Chippendale, Goofy, Pluto and maybe Eeyore or Tigger. Um, I've not really seen much, like rare, many rare characters in Cafe Mickey, it does tend to be just the Fab Five and maybe one or two others, I don't know. I have seen Mr. Smee in there, Mr. Smee walked right past me, which was a bit rude, um, but there you go. In California, the character dining goes as such. In California Adventure, they've got Ariel's Grotto, which is like a Berge de Sandrelon. It's a princess meet and greet. You first meet Ariel in an official photograph, and then as you're dining, you generally tend to have Cinderella, Snow White, Belle, and Aurora come round and meet and greet with you. Occasionally, Tiana and Rapunzel have been seen there, but I don't think it's very common for them to appear at Ariel's Grotto uh, but and the I would say the meet and greet uh, in Ariel's Grotto is not as good as Fantasy Fair in Fantasy Fair in Disneyland you get like proper interaction you can talk with them whereas in Ariel's Grotto I felt they were all in a rush to meet and greet as many people as possible and get pictures 
Another character dining experience you can have in California is at the Paradise Pier Hotel. It's the grill and you can meet Daisy and the other characters and they're all in like beachy kind of costume because it's Paradise Pier Hotel. Another restaurant is Goofy's Kitchen and that's in the main Disneyland Hotel. Never been there, it's quite expensive um, and I'm guessing obviously Goofy is the star and you get to meet the Fab Five as well. It says here that yeah, it's the Fab Five. A dining experience which I didn't do but it also has characters is the Storytellers Cafe in the Grand California Hotel. Never been to that one but I've heard that it's animal based so you get to meet Miko from Pocahontas, you get to meet Kina and Coda from Brother Bear so that's pretty interesting because I've never met those so it'd be cool to meet them. And then the character experience that I did which was breakfast in Disneyland Park, it was at the Plaza Inn and again it was buffet breakfast, you go and help yourself and fill your boots basically and characters would come round to you. I met Minnie and I also met Captain Hook and ER, I met Winnie the Pooh, I met Chip and Dale, I met so many characters in that look in that breakfast meal, it was amazing. And I've been told that in the non character meal like for dining in the evening and lunch they do a really nice roast chicken which is supposed to be delicious so if I ever get back to California soon then that's one thing I'm going to try. I'm going to talk about in the differences between Disneyland California and Disneyland Paris is the cast members. Now I think the attitude of the cast members is very important to how you feel as you enter the park and I think they help set the mood for the day. If you've got cast members who are happy and welcoming and big smiles on their faces and they look genuinely pleased to see you then you're obviously going to feel the Disney magic and you're in a different world completely and California has that in spades like everyone wants to be your friend everyone will high five you high for you and cast members are happy to do like anything for you being a solo traveler and being in California with its really hot climate I was obviously in like strappy tops and things and it's really hard to put sun cream on yourself on your back so I had cast members who were more than happy to help me with my non sunburning issues which I still managed to get a sunburn anyway but at least they would try and help me with that. In Paris like you go in to enter the park and they're just like sometimes they don't even give you time for you to scan your own ticket through the barriers to let you in it's just like ticket in you go and it's like really is that adding to the magic occasionally you get the odd cast member in Paris who is lovely and they're really in the atmosphere like you get the occasional cast member who will be having fun uh, leading the parade like following the parade along and dancing and things there was a cast member I met in November last year who worked in um, Frontierland and he was really fun and he still works there I think he works on Phantom Manor now I can't remember his name it's like Manuel or something but he was really hilarious and he was just like Disney magic another cast member we met in the Walt Disney Studios in Paris Jessica she really made the Tower of Terror a frightening experience for my friend Joe and another one Jose he was really good as well um, for my friends Katie and Hannah when we went with them in January he was a really good cast member for um, Tower of Terror we met a lovely guy called Pierre who was asking me about my pins on Armageddon <laughs> while the experience of the Armageddon was going on and we were talking pins which was great and I loved that but I found it a lot rarer than in California in California literally every cast member I talked to would be really animated and like really want to talk to me and being from England as well I guess they don't get many English people in the California Disneyland everyone just expects them to go to Florida I guess so a lot of people I got a lot of are you from Australia and I'm like no I'm not from Australia I'm from England oh England that's so cool tell me all about it and I remember having a conversation actually about the attitudes of the cast members in 
with someone in one of the shops in California and like the differences between California and Paris and yeah I just like being able to chill and talk to people and cast members would see that I was alone and sometimes they'd initiate conversations with me never mind me going to them so it was really nice because there were times when although I enjoyed my experience on the whole I did get a bit lonely so it was nice to have someone just come up and talk to me and when I first got to Disneyland the first thing I did was go to California Adventure and the cast member there was I was looking for a first time a badge and the bureau office didn't have any because that's the place where most people get sent and the cast member took me by the arm and she's like I'll come with you and she walked up the street with me to like the nearest shop restaurant place to get me a first time a badge so that was really nice of her so yeah cast members in california are brilliant um i think they're getting there with paris now i think paris cast members are getting better and better but there's like i don't know if it's a european thing where some of them are just a lot more reserved but it's not very disney-ish so i think they need to lose the europeanness and realize that they're in disney so they have to be disney-fied one thing that i like about california disneyland as well is that you get free badges in america they call them buttons but um over here it's badges i think and you get badges for like all kinds of things you get like birthday so i'm celebrating happily ever after if you've just got engaged in disneyland first time badges which is what i've got i got a badge for being at the plaza inn minnie's breakfast that was really fun and like the free stuff you get, like I got a sticker for going on the fire truck with Keith, the, uh, the fire uh, truck driver. And that was really fun, going down Main Street and he's like, here, have a sticker, you're now a junior firefighter. And I was like, cool, I'm a junior firefighter for Disneyland. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what it's like in Paris, because um, I've never tried. I think you just get a free birthday sticker or something and you can have a phone call from Mickey Mouse. But I don't think they really have a lot of free stuff. Um, in Disneyland Paris, which is a shame. Nighttime shows in the Disneyland Park. Now, I think this is where Disneyland Paris has an edge over California. Disney Dreams is amazing. It's one of the best shows I've ever seen. And it's great with the water and the projection on the castle and the fireworks and the lights. I mean, yes, in Disneyland California, it is pretty cool to have actual Tinkerbell flying around the castle. But it doesn't look as good I don't think I don't know I just like I was watching it and I was like cool Tinkerbell and then after a bit I was like what is she doing she's literally just bouncing around and you know I, I, her flying was just way off I thought and I just thought yeah as far as castle shows go it's pretty perfect for Disney dreams I think it's Work, it would it wouldn't work on California's castle because it's so small but because Paris is a lot bigger dreams does look really impressive and really amazing however there is a show that Disneyland Park has that uh, in California does that Paris doesn't and that is the um, oh, I keep forgetting everything what is it mm, fantastic yeah, there is a show that California Disneyland has that Paris doesn't, and that is the Fantasmic show, which involves uh, the Tom Sawyer's Island and Mickey Mouse and Maleficent, and the boats get used, like there's this great um, show on the pirate ship that comes round, and it's got Captain Hook and Peter climbing all over the rafters and having a fight and then you've got the princesses coming on rafts that light up and they're all lit up and that's really amazing like I loved Fantasmic it was amazing um, so Dreams is phenomenal in Paris but then Fantasmic is really good in California so pros and cons and I think as well there's like there's two shows of Fantasmic whereas dreams is just once um, and it's usually at park closing time so whenever that night that park closing that's when it is and it's like 20 minutes and this leads on to parades as well parades i think um disneyland paris has magic on parade 
which is really good and love, don't get me wrong, I love Magic on Parade and the song does get stuck in my head for days and days but it's the same song for every single float and sometimes I think it would be nice if maybe halfway there was a bit of variety with the music and California has the Sensational Parade and with each individual float is the music related to that film so Aladdin's got Arabian Nights, Ariel's got Under the Sea, the Tiana float's got uh, I think it's Dig a Little Deeper I think yeah and I just like the individuality and the separation of the floats and the performers I think that's really great and I wished we could have something similar to that in Paris. I don't know if it's maybe cost more to do individual music per float, but it's nice. However, I do think the quality of the floats are maybe a little bit better in Paris. So, yeah, I really like the theming of the Peter Pan float in um, Paris. Like, each float is individually themed in Paris, I guess, whereas actually in California, they're stood on a big drum. You've got Aladdin on top of a big drum. You've got Tinkerbell on top of a big drum. Ariel's got a shell, I think. But, yeah, they're all on top of drums. And then Mickey's in a great big circle playing a keyboard uh, in California. But, yeah, they're mostly drums. And I like the individuality of the floats in Paris. So they're always interesting to see. And, like, with the princess float in Paris, you've got Anna and Elsa at the front and it's Elsa Rosen themed. And then it goes into a swing scene with Rapunzel and Flynn which is really really nice <laughs> so yeah both parades are good I mean I like the individuality of the music in California but I like the quality of the different floats in Paris so another thing I want to talk about as well with regards to the character meet and greets there's the Fantasy Fair in California which has obviously the princess meets but you don't get to meet all the princesses in there outside of the Fantasy Fair just on the bridge they alternate between Merida and Rapunzel and Flynn meeting and greeting which is really cool. Uh, Merida is meeting and greeting at the Princess Pavilion at the moment. I don't know if that's going to continue forever though. Um, but before that other Christmas she was meeting by Casey's Corner which is where Rapunzel used to be. And I just think it's nice that the two swap. And in all, both parks are incredible in their own little ways. Each has pros and cons. And they, but they both bring like a different side to Disney, I guess, and the films, and be it character meets and rides and stuff. It's just all Disney, and it's all magical. And I'm not going to say that one park is better than the other, even though it maybe sounds like I'm more biased towards California. I'm really not. I do love Paris and its quaintness, and it's got a charm to it that California doesn't have. But then California has things which are better than Paris, obviously. And that's just going to be how it is. I mean, if I was comparing Walt Disney World to Paris, then yeah, that's going to be a major um, difference. But both parks represent Walt and I think it's great and long may they continue. I think Paris is one that obviously it hasn't been open as long as Disneyland in California and it's going to grow and evolve and become better and better. And it's just watch this space with it I think. It's got potential to be a really good park and I know it's been struggling with debt but the Walt Disney World Company is starting to pay in more and invest more so that's all good and it can only mean good things for Disneyland Paris. So yeah, thank you for watching this slightly babbled um, video. I really have no idea how I'm going to edit this but hopefully you will enjoy it. Let me know what you think of Disneyland Paris and Disneyland California and what you enjoy and if you've been to both as well and want to give me your opinions then please do let me know what you think of California versus Paris.